Lots of action this morning, sending Warren Craval to Philadelphia Union, bringing Hercules Gomez into Toronto FC. Just talk about everything that's gone down today. Yeah, um, well, this is the first year that the, uh, the trade deadline coincided with the transfer, um, the FIFA transfer window. So uh, in MLS, typically that's roster free September 15th, but this year um, the league moved it forward to, uh, to yesterday. So really, in some way, it's sort of like a roster compliance date. So you got to make sure that you're thinking forward about the um, about your roster and what it, you're going to need down the road. And so for us, an opportunity came to get Herc, and 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 he's someone that that fans I think know in uh, Toronto from his play in CCL and uh, sort of another veteran presence, uh, another person who's been to the MLS playoffs, has, has won in MLS, has won internationally down in Mexico. So he's, he's again, it's about adding not just people who can up on the field, but can be leaders in the locker room. So uh, we felt like it was a step up for us. It was a move that uh, unfortunately, we uh, it came at the cost of, uh, of sending Warren to Philadelphia. Uh, I want to thank Warren for his efforts. He um, uh, did, did a lot of great things for us, but uh, uh, unfortunately, in the salary cap world, in order to add someone, a lot of times you have to you have to move someone. So uh, we felt like we we have a, a very strong roster. I didn't want to shake too too many things up. I think that, as I've said all year, that we've assembled a roster that is. Uh, capable of doing great things uh, and continuity, stability are themes that we're trying to promote and uh, um, develop the current guys we have there and then rather trying to think about, you know, the grass is always greener if you bring someone else in. So uh, we're excited about Herc. We think he can really add uh, 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 another element dimension to this team. Um, and 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 yeah, that's that's really about it. Toronto FC's concern has never been offense, more defense. Why was it that you chose to go with a striker as opposed to signing a defensive player? Um, well, we signed two this transfer window. I think we did. We were um, we signed Ahmed Kantari and uh, we brought in Josh Williams. And I think uh, with that, and then obviously Hercules Gomez. That's three additions we made in the transfer window. I think I'm not sure how many teams made. Three. There's probably only a few other ones. So um, we were able to to address two pieces with additions on the back line, as well as uh, Ashton is getting healthy. So we have essentially more three people coming back. Uh, so we feel like we've 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 addressed the back line, um, and and we felt like this is an opportunity that sort of added a different piece for us. Is there any connection between Gomez and the club? Um, Aside from the fact that I think I think he scored three goals against TFC in the past uh, when they played in Concacaf Champions League, I think so comp competitively. Yes, um, uh, I believe Hart Gomez. He's from the the Los Angeles area, has some roots there, and so he has some history with the coaching staff. So they're aware of the type of person he is. He's obviously played on the U.S. Men's National Team with with Michael and Josie and with Robbie, and uh, so. There's some connections with people in the locker room. There's connection with the coaching staff, uh, and there's connection with MLS. And and as we know, you know, bringing people in and uh, during the summer internationally can be uh, a challenge. Have its challenges with assimilating, but 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 Herc won't have that because he knows MLS. Uh, if you read on his story, it's a really interesting story about a player who's really had to overcome the odds. Uh, worked his way up through the all various levels of, of soccer in the United States to become the professional the international that he is so uh, I'd encourage you know fans uh, to and, and some of our younger players to actually uh, look at Herc as an example uh, of someone who can sort of start low and, and go through the ranks. So with the pieces that you've added to this team do you feel confident now that Toronto FC is a legit MLS Cup contender? Um, you know what I like to think about is, is let's let's always try to keep on improving and I think that's what coaching the coaching staff is trying to do uh, it's about MLS as we know it's about making the playoffs and then once the playoffs start anything can happen I think this this team is built for uh, a team that can do a lot of good things in the playoffs but let's take one game at a time uh, uh, but but I'm very happy with the group and, and how they've evolved over the year you've mentioned the uh, transfer window moving up how does that change things for you is it more challenging what, what was that it's, it's an interesting dynamic because um, you know, I think I think if you're if you're a team who's who maybe needs to make a big move, you might be a little bit caught off guard because you have to uh, do a, quite a bit of work to bring in a player from maybe on a transfer or a loan internationally, and at the same time you have other uh, teams calling. You just got to hand you got to juggle a lot of things at once. Um, I was a little surprised that more wasn't done across the league, but but you know I guess a lot of people feel like that they have the rosters that can compete and make the playoffs. Was, was 
was the Herc deal dependent on getting you know, getting Kerbal's salary off the books? Um, you had yeah. I mean, um, uh, uh, it's it's in the salary cap world. If you're going to bring on a guy, uh, a certain number, you got to make sure you clear it. And I think that's uh, uh, that's one of the, the sort of critical characteristics of this league is that compared to the rest of the world, where you can sign in a really an infinite number, except for the financial fair plays in MLS, the salary cap requires you to do a lot of one for one things. Did a lot of teams were a lot of teams going after Hercules? I mean, this kind of came out of nowhere. Well, you can't you can't go after a player because uh, Kansas City held his right of first refusal. So it was really speaking with Kansas City and speaking with the league. I don't know uh, what other teams uh, were speaking to them, um, but I'm glad that we were able to pick up pick up yeah. our guy. I know he was. Uh, I think he had mentioned uh, and he had mentioned retirement possibly mm -hmm. recently. Did you guys have to talk him out of uh, hanging him up, or was? Uh, was he always interested in coming back for another yeah. season? No, I think he, a few years ago he was interested in coming back, and then I think this time around it was about being a part of a, a side that was capable of winning. Uh, I think you talk to him, and he, he sees obviously the players that we have in the locker room and what we're doing in our facility, and uh, and obviously the city of Toronto speaks for itself. So uh, I, there was no talking to about coming, you know, retirement or persuasion or anything like that. This was this was something that he wanted to do. He was excited about. And, uh, and we're just we're lo we're looking to, to looking forward to bringing him into the fold in the next coming days. Not to put the cart before the horse, so to speak, but with all the new Blue Jays contending, have you allowed yourself to sit back and think about what it'd be like to make the playoffs uh, for the first time? Um, you know, I think everyone's in the back of the, back of everyone's mind, but we have a long way to go. Um, you know, some some teams only have nine or ten games, but we have thirteen, so there's a lot lot to do before uh, uh, October, the end of October. So. Uh, we don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about it. I think you have to be prepared about what those games look like, and I think that's understanding that, that bringing a player in who has an ex experience will, will add to that, but at the same time, is let's take one game at a, at a time. We have Kansas City this weekend. We have New York Rebels, who's right you know, with us in the standing. So let's focus on those games, and then, and then we'll go from there. We'll take so one more. Fitting, how do you see Perk fitting into the group I itself? I mean, he has the experience. He's had his injuries in, in recent times. Is it more uh, to, to put pressure on, on the starters, or is he a player that uh, could be pushing for a starting place himself? I'll, I'll, I'll defer to Greg uh, in terms of where he's going to fit on the field. What I do know is that he's, he's a great soccer player. Uh, he's a competitor. Uh, he brings some of the intangibles to the locker room that, I, that, that, that can always help a team that's looking to make a playoff push. But in terms of where he's going to be on the field, I'll, I'll defer to Greg on that. Any other, uh, any other 2010 World Cup players coming in? Uh, we, you know, we're always open to it. Always open to it. Is that, is that it in terms of dealing with uh, Yeah, well, we can't do anything uh, internationally because uh, uh, unless they're out of contract. So you never know. You never know.